فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى We are in the fourth part, right? Of حكم النكاح بدون ولي The ruling of a nikah without the consent of the guardian. In our previous sit or our previous session, we spoke about من هو الولي who is the wali when the father is absent and the aqsamu awliya al-mar'ah the types uh, we mentioned the order as well in which they were in today inshallah ta'ala we will be speaking about hukm al-mawlud min hadha nikah the child that is born from this marriage with which is without the permission or the consent of the guardian this child that is born from this marriage or from this this nikah or this so called nikah and also what we will be speaking about is what do the two spouse or the two individuals who are together they are not spouse but the two people were together what is the ruling regarding them? That is what we're going to be speaking about, inshallah ta'ala, in this sit, bi-ithnillah al So we'll speak about two things. The child that is born from <coughs> the, uh, this so-called nikah, and also what is the ruling that the two individuals have to do after knowing the ruling of this mas'ala. My beloved brothers and sisters, the child that is born is not regarded waladu zina, is not regarded as a child that is born from a wedlock, صح? from out of, uh, from out a, uh, from that is born out of a wedlock, صح? بِاتِفَاقِ الْعُلَمَى This is a consensus of the scholars. And one is not allowed to slander that child. To say to that child, you are well do zina. And it falls under the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is in Sahih Muslim in hadith Abi Hurairah. إِثْنَتَانِ فِي النَّاسِ هُمَا بِهِمْ كُفْرٌ Two things that are present in the creation is kufr. And this kufr is kufr asghar. And it's not kufr akbar. It's not major kufr. It's from the ma'asi which are mughallada. The serious, tough sins. At-ta'nu fi nasabi Slandering a person's lineage. By saying that you are waladu zina. You came from a wedlock. You are zina. Wa niyahatu ala al-mayyiti and wailing over the dead. The reason the scholars, they try to mention the hikmah, the wisdom, why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned these two together. Because atta'nu fi nasabi, slandering a person's lineage is idha'un lil hayy, is that you're harming this living, this person who's living, you're harming them. And an niyahatu ala al-mayyiti is what? Idha'un lil mayyiti, it's a harm towards the what? The dead, because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said in the hadith that the crying that is dead, that is done over the dead, لا ي إنه لا يعذب 
الميت ببكاء أهله he is punished based on the crime of his people meaning the wailing that they do when they don't rely on Allah تبارك وتعالى قضاء قدر he gets punished for it the one who's in his grave the scholars they say he only gets punished if he's what if he permitted it for them and if he legislated it for them or if he told them to do it after his death but if he was against it and they did it this is nothing ولا تزر وزرة وزر أخرى على كل حال I'm going to now bring the quote of the scholars who state that the child that is born from this so-called marriage is not zina this child is not zina and it's a child that has a lineage and the father is his father and his mother is his mother and every single thing that comes through a correct marriage that this child will get other than المقام عليه the father and the, the two spouse cannot these two individuals cannot remain together anymore other than that the child this is his father this is his mother the husband the woman's mother is his mother he can never marry her and say look oh, I was never married so I can marry your mom now never وما يتعلق and we're going to see the only difference is the only difference is these two individuals are not allowed to be together anymore and there's no talaq there's no talaq that's needed from them there's something called al-fasq no hakim needs to do it no qadi needs to do it they don't even need to utter anything the minute they find out the ruling everything becomes clear to them they just have to walk separate ways if they want to make a new marriage between the two of them they have to take the path for it they have to go to the wali new marriage now is there a difference between if they've been together for a long time or if they've been together for a very short time? No, there's no difference. In Tal al Amadu, if the time was very long or if the time wasn't very long, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. They still have to go through the process of as, of as a person who is willing to get married from now. And that's the kalam of the ulama that I'm going to bring, inshallah ta'ala. Also, none of them is going to be lashed or punished because they've committed zina. None of them can be insulted. These are ahkam that the ulama state. And there is no sin on them both if they didn't know the ruling. If they did know the ruling, like in, then of course they get sinned and they get punished for it. But the punishment cannot be a capital punishment. There's no raj. There's no what? There's no raj. There is no raj. And whether they knew that it was halal or haram, the child is never willing to zina. This is the kalam of the ulama. قال موفق الدين عبد الله بن أحمد بن قدامة in his مغني ابن قدامة رحمه الله he says in his كتاب المغني which is the شرح of مختصر الخراقي he says إذا ثبت هذا this is after he spoke about uh, marriage. That is done without the consent of the wali that it's batil and everything. When he spoke about it, he says, هذا, If that is clear, that a woman cannot marry without the consent of her guardian. The one who believes it's permissible to get married, the one who believes that it's permissible to get married without the consent of the wali. Ah. There's no sin on him. He's not sinning by believing that you can get married without the consent of your wali. If he believes it's permissible, you can go get married without the consent of the wali. There's no sin on him. And he doesn't get punished for it. The reason is because because this is some from the masail which are furu'. They are from the masail which are what? Sub-branches. Al-Mukhtalaf fiha, which are differed upon. There's a khilaf here. So this person can be miskeen. He could actually believe the great noble Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, said it. Al-Sha'bi Amr ibn Sharahbil said it. And the likes of them have said this. So these are jibal, mountains in knowledge. This miskeen can fall into believing them. So for him, there's no sin on him. And there is no punishment for believing this. Because this matter is different upon. There's khilaf present. 
ومن اعتقد حرمته but the one who believes is haram أثم وأدب he believes it's haram he's of the opinion that it's haram but then he goes and he does it أثم he's sinning for doing this وأدب and he's punished for it but the punishment cannot reach capital punishment he can't be killed for it وَإِنْ أَتَتْ بِوَلَدٍ مِّنْهُ now this is the point see this is what, the point we want if, the, if a child comes from this now the woman gives birth to a child for him لَحِقَهُ نَسَبُهُ فِي الْحَالَيْنِ both of the times the child is attributed to him so whether he believed it was halal or he was believed it was haram both of the times is what? the child is attributed to him the child takes the name of his what? his father he has a nasab. So no one can come based on the previous hadith. Ithnani huma ithnani fi nasi huma bihim kufrun atta'anu fi nasabi wa niyahatu ala al-mayyiti. You're not allowed to slander this person's lineage. You can't say waladu zina, waladu zina. Or your child was born from a wedlock. You can't say that. Qala Abu Bakr Muhammad ibn Ibrahim ibn al-Mundir al-Naysaburiyu fi al-Iqna'a. Abu Bakr ibn Muhammad ibn Ibrahim ibn al-Mundir al-Naysaburiyu Scholars differ upon whether he's a Hanbali or Shafi'i, there's Khilafat. But the strongest opinion is that he's not a Hanbali or a Shafi'i, rather he's an Imam Mujtahid Mutlaq. Mujtahid Mutlaq. He said, Rahimahullah, فالنكاح لا يجوز إلا بولي. That nikah is not permissible, except with the consent of the wali. والأولياء العصبة. And the awliya are who? The عصبة. We spoke about who the عصبة were. فإن لم يكن ولي if there's no wali, فسلطان ولي من لا ولي له. The Sultan, the Muslim leader, he is the wali for the one who doesn't have no wali. فإن نكحت امرأة if a man a woman goes and then gets married بغير إذن وليها without the permission of her guardian أو السلطان or without the consent of the Muslim leader. If she goes and does that, إن لم يكن لها ولد فنكاح باطل. If there's no child. If there's no child, then the nikah is batil. He says, Sorry, 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 not walad. If the woman goes, gets, goes and gets married without the consent of her wali, or without the leader, and if it's done without the consent of the wali, then the nikah is batil. Now he's going to divide the two now. If he entered into onto her, I meaning they, they, cons, the, the, they consumed the marriage, or if they didn't, he's going to now divide the two. He says, فَإِلَّمْ يُصِبْهَا فُرْقَ بَيْنَهُمَا If the man has no intimate relationship with her, pay attention. Then that's simple. We just tell him, go. You leave and she goes. Nothing is needed from him. He doesn't have to say, talak tuki, talak tuki. He doesn't need to say any of that. He's just told, go home. Take your bags and go home. Uh, there's nothing here. Because you can only divorce when there is something to divorce, right? You can only untie a knot when there was a... There's a knot there in the first place. Oh, there's nothing there. We just tell, you, tell him, take him, take your bag home. May Allah forgive you for what you've done in the past. Take your, ba take your ba bag home and go. فَإِن لَمْ يُصِبْهَا فُرِّقَ بَيْنَهُمَا We tell him, take his bag, go home. فَإِن أَصَابَهَا But then he entered onto her. He had a relationship with her. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهَا فَلَهَا مِهْرُ مِثْلِهَا She has something that is known as مِهْرُ الْمِثْلِ He might have told her, I'm going to give you 10,000 pounds. Or he might have told her, I'm going to give you an apple, apple juice. Whatever they agreed upon, that's, there's لَا قِيْمَةَ لَهُ Doesn't matter. Whatever they agreed upon, the Shari'a won't take into consideration. Because she has, she has what's known as what? مِهْرُ الْمِثْلِ مِهْرُ الْمِثْلِ is what? Mehrul Mithri is the dowry of her, her equivalent. The women of her time, the dowry in which they get, that, that's, the, that, that, that's the dowry that she gets. It's called Mehrul Mithri. It's average. It's average. Not the expensive one and not the low one. She gets the average standard one. Pay attention now. It's called Mehrul Mithri. The women of her caliber. Okay? The same is if a woman is raped as well. She always gets Mehrul Mithri. Any man who enters upon a woman, whether it's zina, whether it's not, huh? If he rapes, of course. But if she consents to it, something else. بِمَسْتَحَلَّ مِنْ فَرْجِهَا Because he made her farj halal for himself. وَيَلْحَقُ بِهِ وَلَدْ The child is also attributed to the father. 
from the mother. In waladatu, if she gives birth to a child for him. وَتَكُونُ عَلَيْهَا الْعِدَّةِ She also has to count her عِدَّةِ وَلَهُ أَنْ يَنْكِحَهَا نِكَاحًا مُسْتَأْنَفًا صَحِيحًا He's also allowed to go and get married to her now if he wants to. A bra- we push, we say, look, hey, you guys have been together for 20 years. You want to marry this sister now? Okay, we put the... Okay? If he says, Alhamdulillah, am I not married to her? No, never. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabb. And he just goes, then she can go. The same with her. She says, I don't, I've never wanted it. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Go. He could go, she could go. Ah. But she gets a idda, she has to count. Mehrul Misri happens. And they get the option of choosing to get married to each other. They can if they want to. They can if they want to. Qala Abu Hassan Ali ibn Muhammad ibn Habib al Mawardi al Basri. Al Imam al Mawardi, rahimahullah, he says in his Kitab al Hawi al Kabir, which is a sharah of the Mukhtasar al Muzani. Al Imam al Muzani, rahimahullah, is Mukhtasar. He's explaining it. He's explaining it. Al Mawardi, who is a Shafi'i, and the book he's explaining is Al Imam al Shafi'i student. Ismail ibn Yahya al-Muzani, rahimahullah. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i said about Muzani, what did he say? He said he's Nasiru, Nasiru Madhabi. Al-Mawardi says, Faslun chapter. Wa idha kana jahilayni bi tahrimin nikahi bi ghayri wali fala hadda alayhima. If they were both ignorant about the impermissibility of this nikah, Without the permission of the wali, if they were ignorant of the ruling of it, فَلَا حَدَّ عَلَيْهِمَا There is no punishment. There's no, there's no capital punishment on the, upon the two of them. Nor is there any punishment. لِأَنَّ الْجَهْلَ بِالتَّحْرِيمِ أَقْوَى شُبْهَ Because ignorance is from the greatest shubha. It's an argument which you can use. I didn't know. The sharia, it gives ignorance of something. And it, it makes an excuse, a valid excuse. وَقَدْ قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ And the Prophet said, إِذْ رَأُوا الْحُدُودَ بِالشُّبُهَاتِ Repel punishments with doubts. But as we know, this statement from the Prophet is not authentic. But the qa'idah is sahih. The qa'idah according to the fuqaha and the usuliyin is a qa'idah which is accepted. Which basically means if there's a person who has a punishment that he's going to go through, he's either going to be lashed or his, his hand's going to be cut off or anything. If there's a doubt, whether that doubt is 1%, it doesn't matter. Repel, the whole ruling is removed because of this doubt that's there. إِدْرَعُوا الْحُدُودَ بِالشُّبْهَاتِ Ah, So we stop the had that's going to be done on him, the punishment. So this guy has a shubha. He rather has a strong shubha. I didn't know. From this, this is not just 1% now, it's actually 99.9%. ثُمَّ يَتَعَلَّقُ عَلَى هَذَا الْإِصَابَةِ مِنَ الْأَحْكَامِ Now, until he goes on to say it, until he goes on to say it, what about if he entered onto her? There's ahkam that are now pertaining, that are dealing with the intimacy he had with her. مَا يَتَعَلَّقُ عَلَى النِّكَاحِ الصَّحِيحِ The same ruling, the same ahkam, ثُمَّ يَتَعَلَّقُ عَلَى هَذِي الْإِصَابَةِ مِنَ الْأَحْكَامِ مَا يَتَعَلَّقُ عَلَى النِّكَاحِ الصَّحِيحِ It's the same as if it was a correct marriage. The same hukum for this man and this woman, where now they've done their relationship, the same hukum that was done for a person who got married correctly, the same ahkam pertain here. Illa fil muqami ali, except he can't stay with her. Because there's not there's no staying here. But everything else is the same. For you jibun idda idda will be counted. So that's the child is then attributed to the father. And also the, the prohibition of the musahara takes place, which is what? He can't go get married to the, the girl's mother. He's, he's, that's his mother-in-law. And it always will be. The only thing that has now been stopped is that they can't stay with one another. This is the kalam of who? Abu al-Hassan Ali ibn Muhammad ibn, ibn Habib al-Mawardi al-Basri in his kitab, Al-Hawi Al-Kabir. Al-Imam Abu Muhammad, Al-Husayn Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Muhammad, Al-Farra Al-Baghawi, Rahimahullah, Al-Imam Al-Baghawi. In his great book, Sharh Al-Sunnah, when he was explaining the hadith, فَالنِّكَاحُهَا بَاطِلٌ 
<coughs> the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the nikah is batil. He said, دليل على أن العقد لا يكون موقوفا على إجازة الولي وفي قوله وفي قوله فإن أصابها فإن أصابها فلها المهر دليل على أن الوطء الشبه يوجب مهر المثل ولا يجب به الحد ولا يثبت النسب ويثبت النسب الإمام البغوي رحمه الله يسيز فنكاحها باطل is an evidence is a دليل أن العقد لا يكون موقوفا على إجازة الولي that the marriage is not موقوفا it's not connected to the permission of the wali. What does this mean? I need to explain it. Translation isn't, isn't something I can do here. The girl, got, the, the girl and the woman are together. They go and they, they do the nikah بغير إذن wali. The wali didn't know. He's unaware of it. I pay attention here. The wali didn't know that his daughter, the guy snatched the girl, ran away with her, came back and, and all he sees is she's got a, a big stomach. He now he sees his daughter is married, he sees the man. The father here, can he then say, you know what, you guys have done what you did, you've fallen into the shortcoming that you fell into, you know what, I pat you on the shoulder, go with your girl. She's all yours, take her. Can he say that and will it then work? Ibn Imam al Baghawi is saying, this shows that it doesn't stand that statement of the wali. By him saying that I now let you take my daughter, she's yours, keep her. That is not going to work. The reason is because the nikah is batil. How can he then affirm what's batil? So what he needs to do is the wali. And the, is that they have to now, the wali has to deal with this man as though he never married his daughter. Because that's, what, that's, the, that's the case. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهَا فَلَهَا الْمِهْرُ But if he had intimacy with her based on the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, she has a مِهْرُ الْمِثْلِ As I said, she got مِهْرُ الْمِثْلِ which is that the women of her time that are equivalent to her and her standard and her class, whatever they get is what she gets. دليل على أن الوطء الشبه يوجب مهر المثل. The statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم هي الإمام البغوي سين. It shows that وطء الشبه. This marriage is وطء الشبه. Because this man, he, when he did this, he didn't want to do zina. He couldn't just done zina with the girl. But he actually went, he went to a sheikh, sat in front of the sheikh. You see, and he married the girl. You see, so it's a shubha for him. It's a doubt. That can't be treated as a man who went to a motel, took a woman, committed zina with her. That's not the same. دليل على أن وطء الشبه يوجب مهر المثل ولا يجب به الحد and no punishment is placed on this person. He's not punished for what he did. ويثبت النسب and also the lineage is attributed to the father. So the child is his. We're not going to say this is not your child. The child is what? Is his. The child is is his. So. Saying that, oh, uh, when I got married to her, after the father found out, guess what he said to me? He said, no problem. He pat me on the shoulder. He said, don't worry, I'm your father. No problem, inshallah ta'ala, may Allah forgive you for what you've done. And so forth. Huh? So forth. We'll say to him, that's, that's nothing. Ah, that's nothing. Because, فَنِكَاحُهَا بَاطِلُ What you guys did was not a nikah. There's nothing there for the father to pat you on the shoulder. You see, if you want halal, then what you need to do is get married. Ask the father, can you now marry me off to your daughter? Ah. Another quote. قال أبو عمر يوسف ابن عبد الله ابن محمد ابن عبد البر إن كتاب الاستذكار الجامع لمذاهب فقهاء الأمصار. ابن عبد البر إن كتاب الاستذكار. He says, وأما الشافعي أم الإمام الشافعي فالنكاح عنده بغير ولي مفسوخ. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i, the nikah that is done without the permission and the consent of the guardian for him is mafsukh. Mafsukh means what? There's no talaq required. They are automatically, they go separate ways. Qabla al-dukhul wa ba'da. Whether they've had intimacy or whether they haven't had intimacy. It doesn't matter. Whether he entered onto her or whether he didn't. It doesn't matter. Tala al-amad aw lam yatul. 
whether the time was long, they were married for 30 years and they've, had, they've got 10 kids together or whether they've got no kids together, it just happened yesterday, it's the same. It doesn't matter. وَلَا يَتَوَارَثَانِ إِنْ مَاتْ أَحَدُهُمَا And they don't inherit each other. If one of them dies, they don't inherit each other. Okay. قَالَ إِسْحَاقُ And then Imam uh, Ibn Abdul Bar, after that, after uh, lines after, he brings the statement of Ishaq ibn Rahuya. And that Ishaq ibn Rahuya says, كُلَّمَا طَلَّقَهَا Every time he divorces her. So when the man... Pay attention here. If a man goes and has goes with a woman without the consent of the guardian, okay. If he divorces her whilst together, is that divorce considered? He can divorce her twenty times if he wants, hundred times if he wants to. Every time he divorces her, and he had married her without the consent of the wali, lam yaqa' alayha talaq. The talaq doesn't happen. Wala yaqa' baynahuma mirathun. An inheritance doesn't happen for them. They can't inherit one another. Lanna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala because the Prophet said, fa nikahuha batil. Because the nikah is what? Is batil. Thalath and the Prophet said it three times. Fa nikahuha batil. Fa nikahuha batil. Fa nikahuha batil. The Prophet said. Wal batilu mafsukhun. And the batil is mafsukh. The two individuals have to go their separate ways. فَلَا يَحْتَاجُ إِلَىٰ فَسْقِ حَاكِمٍ وَلَا غَيْرِهِ And it doesn't require a leader, the Muslim leader, to, to separate the two. It doesn't require it. And it doesn't require qadi. That statement of Imam Shafi'i ibn Abdul Bar brings it in his kitab al-istithkar. And Shafi'i clearly says it in his kitab al-um. That those wordings... And the meaning is what Imam Shafi'i says in his Kitab al-Um. And I'm going to conclude with this final quote of Imam Shafi'i, which he says, وَفِي قَوْلِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ In the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is the hadith, أَيُّمَا الْمَرَأَةِ نَكَحَتْ بِغَيْرِ إِذْنِ وَلِيهَا فَنِكَحُهَا بَاطِلِ He says, الْبَيَانُ مِنْ أَنَّ الْعَقْدَ إِذَا وَقَعَتْ بِغَيْرِ وَلِي فَهِيَ مُنْفَسِخَ فَهِيَ مُنْفَسِخَةِ The two individuals are separated from one another. لِقَوْلِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ Based on the Prophet's statement, فَنِكَحُهَا بَاطِلٌ Which the Prophet ﷺ said it three times. وَالْبَاطِلُ لَا يَكُونُ حَقًّا The batil can never be haq. It can't be. إِلَّا بِتَجْدِيدِ نِكَحِ غَيْرِهِ Unless a marriage is done. Unless a what? A marriage is done between the two of them. وَلَا يَجُوزُ And it is not permissible. Pats you on the shoulder and says, you know what, I permit you. It won't work. And it's not. In other words, after you the guys have done the nikah b'ghayri idhni wali And then he comes and he pats you on the shoulder. That's not permissible. Abadan, Al-Imam Shafi'i says. Whatsoever. Abadan. Li'annahu, the reason is because. إذا عقد نكاح باطلا If the nikah took place based on a batil principle. لم يكن حقا Then it will never be right. إلا بأن يعقد عقدا جديدا غير باطلا. Unless a marriage is done, that is not batil, that is haq. Unless it's done correctly. What was there before is a batil. What was there before was a, a batil. And the ima and the wali now is patting you on the shoulder, <coughs> is patting you on the shoulder for something that doesn't even exist. So what we take from this, uh, this part, inshallah ta'ala, is the child is the, child, the father's son. Or the father's daughter. And the Sharia still considers this to be what? The Sharia still considers this to be what? It considers it to be everything else is there intact. Other than they can't stay with one another, they do not inherit one another. There's no inheritance between the two of them. Other than that, the scholars, of the, as they clearly have stated, that. You are not allowed to slander that child and call the child waladu zina. You are also not allowed to what? You are also not allowed to call the, the two individuals zanis. You are not allowed to. Because the scholars refer to this as what? Wat ushubha. But once the ruling becomes clear to them, if they stay upon it, then they are sinners and they are 
they are then punished for doing so. Anything which I have said that was wrong, فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ بَرِئَنِي مِنْ It's from me, a shaytan, and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.